So let me click continue. So we'll be videotaping. So welcome to uh, Canvas Hour. The topic today is creating assessments or as uh, Canvas calls them, quizzes. And our presenter is Sarah Luna from the School of Physical Therapy. Sarah's got lots of wisdom to share. So let me turn it over to her. I have some wisdom to share. <laughs> enough wisdom, enough. <laughs> uh, so I've been using Canvas for, for several semesters now uh, as part of the, the pre-pilot pilot, and then the pilot in the spring and, and now in the summer. Um, and I use quizzes in some ways, but not all ways. And so there are probably ways that you intend to use quizzes. Uh, and build quizzes that I don't have any experience with. And so I'm thankful for Melissa being here. Um, and I appreciate being able to defer to her to answer those kinds of questions. Um, so to start off building a quiz, uh, where I am, so this is my live course that I'm teaching this summer. And where I am is on the quizzes page. And I got here by using this left hand navigation menu with all the red links and clicked quizzes. And so what you're seeing is all the quizzes that I've created uh, over the course of this semester. Um, and so if I were going to create a new quiz, I would, this might be behind, if you have your video on and it's on the right hand side of your screen, this might be hidden. Uh, but on the right hand side of your screen, there's a red button that says add quiz. So I click on that and um, it gives you the choices between classic quizzes and new quizzes. Um, I have both in my course. Um, and, and the main difference on surface level is the navigation looks just slightly different in terms of adding student accommodations and running an item analysis for the quiz and where you click to do that. Um, there's also a little bit of difference about using third-party tools, um, like, a, a, correct me if I'm wrong on this, Melissa, so third-party tools for security, like a lockdown browser or something, uh, or linking with third-party sites like Bongo. Did I? I feel like I never explained that well. Is that right, Melissa? I feel like it's as, it's about as good as I get it. Okay. Um, so I've always used classic quizzes and I still have some of those that I've pulled over from, uh, from other places and put into my course. I've been brave this semester and I've been using new quizzes. Um, classic quizzes is going to go away, but not for a long time, like, like a year or something, if that's right, Melissa. Um, and it's very easy to convert classic quizzes to new quizzes. So I'm gonna show you uh, how to build in new quizzes. So I'll select that one and click Submit. Um, so sister, this is this is the screen, right? Where, where you have questions. So this is what you're used to in Blackboard where you establish some of the basic settings for your quiz. Um, so you can establish the number of points you want the quiz to be worth. Um, let me skip this part. Let's give it a name. This is gonna be pretend quiz. Assignment group is something that you to have set up before you create the quiz. And so this is done in assignments and it's where you create categories of assignments. Um, and so you can select where you want the quiz to go. Um, so I would want this to go under ProTop quizzes. My class is called Professional Topics. Um, and so I just abbreviated ProTop for short. Um, how you want the quiz displayed as a percentage, complete, incomplete, points, better grade, et cetera. Uh, if you don't want it to be counted towards the final grade, you can click here. Um, can we talk about that points box whenever you get to it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, it, this also applies in classic quizzes if you're creating it as a practice quiz. So in classic quizzes, there's another option in these drop down menus where it can be a graded quiz or a practice quiz or a survey. Um, and um, I have used practice quizzes in the past, 
um, and stopped actually because I want it to be low stakes and I like to use quizzes to check students understanding. Um, but what I realized is that they don't populate in the grade center if they're not counted towards the grade. And so there is a way to go in and see if students completed the quiz and you go into each individual student and see what their responses were. Uh, but I like to be able to see quickly in the grade center whether students completed it on, on time and, and what their score was when they did it. So um, that's just a, an FYI for counting it towards the final grade or not and how you plan to use it. Uh, this is grayed out right now, um, but my understanding how this might be used is, um, <clears throat> for example, I've used the external site Bongo for quizzes before, particularly for something that seems to be a video quiz. Uh, so if you wanted to be the student to be taken to that external site, it could be created here. That's beyond the scope of, of what I have the expertise to talk about or what we'll do today. Um, in this section, you can assign the group to certain people. Um, and so if you've created groups or you want to assign to individual students or give individual students different uh, due dates or availability, you could do that here. Uh, for the sake of this quiz, we'll just make it assigned to everybody in my class. And let's say we'll make the due date on Friday at 11.59 p.m. And if I only want them to access the quiz in a certain amount of time, I may might make it available during a certain window, let's say Wednesday through the due date on Friday. And then it would become no longer available. Could we walk through like a real simple case? And I'm gonna give you the case. I wanna give um, an, a, a quiz that has five items. I, wanted to, I want students to see a percentage grade um, and I want them to take it online. So I like making quiz questions worth one point a piece. So if I were just, if I knew I was only going to make five questions, I would make it worth five points. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you care where it goes in the grade book or how it's weighted? Uh, yeah, let's say I'm going to put it in a group that's called quizzes. So you can put it in pro okay. top quizzes if you want. Okay. Would. And you want it displayed as percentage. Mm -hmm. There we go. Were there any other parameters? Let's see. So, and how are they, well, their submission type, they're gonna take it online, right? So do we need that external tool business or do we need something else for submission type? Those, those are assignment features, not quiz features. So a oh. submission type in a Canvas quiz is just to do the quiz. So you don't get the choice because it's not necessary. So I can ignore submission type when I'm doing creating a quiz. That right there is is it's grayed out because a quiz is an external tool, literally. That's why it's even there. Um, it might change at some point in the future, but that's just ignore it. Okay, but for right so, now, if I'm doing a quiz, I can ignore submission type. Yes, absolutely. And I'm going to give everybody this quiz. They're all taking the same quiz at the same time. And I want it due next Friday. So next Friday, we could change the due date. Okay, thanks. Good, good scenario. So let me, I, I'm belaboring this points thing because I think I have had a lot of misconceptions there. Um, so I, you know, I was thinking since I was do, and I'm sure this is just a holdover from Blackboard, since I like to display percentages, I was always doing points as 100, thinking, okay, well, I've got five items, they're just gonna be worth 20 points a piece. But it does, I can just put whatever the number of questions are in that points thing. And the display will be where they'll see the percentage. I don't have to mess with that. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. Okay, life got simpler. <laughs> I do that for uh, assignment rubrics as well. I might have a 10 point or a 20 point rubric. And then if I want it displayed as percentage, then Canvas just calculates that for me. Okay. Um, the, the number of points they got out of, out of the total. All right, I need to open the chat here. Uh, 
Okay. Thank you, Melissa, for adding those uh, differences between classic quizzes and new quizzes. Bongo would only be used in assignments. Gotcha. Thank you for that. I'm thankful to have the real OG experts here. All right, um, so from here, if you needed to save it and come back and build questions later, you could click save. Uh, I'm ready to build some questions now, so I'm gonna click on build. <clears throat> build FYI is also the button you click if you want to edit or look at the results of quiz. All right, so if you wanted to add some instructions to the quiz or, or something, uh, you might say this quiz is over module three or, or you know, remind students not to cheat on it or, or something like that. You could add that there. Then add questions, you click on the blue dot, the plus sign. And from here, you can choose to add questions of a bank, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Uh, I have used matching multiple choice and multiple answer questions. Um, and so um, let's just say we're going to create a, a multiple choice question. Uh, so you might have a question title. So maybe this question is going to be about Medicare uh, because regulatory compliance is a lot of what I teach in my class. Um, and so I might ask a question about the time frame for certification of the plan of care according to the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Sarah, you can skip the title, can't you? Uh, I where you where so. you wrote Medicare? Yeah, just skip it. We'll you, try you don't it and save the question. You don't have to title your questions, but if you ever want to export a report on them, having a, a brief title to give you an idea of what the question was about can really help make the report a little more easy, user friendly. Okay. I was afraid it would be giving them the answer. The students don't see your question title. It's kind of like a code for you. Oh, oh, okay. All right, so I've put in some answer options, uh, different time frames, and the correct answer is 30 days. So I've indicated that as correct. If I wanted to give feedback for each individual response, uh, over here on the right-hand side, again, there's a comment bubble. I click on that and it opens a box where I can add information. So I could say, look back <coughs> at a certain textbook. And then I click done to save that. If I wanted to delete an answer choice, I would click on the trash can on the right hand side. If I wanted to add more answer choices, I would click on add answer. Um, when I typed in the stem for this particular quiz item, um, or, uh, a rich content editor opens up. And so if you wanted to add media here, if you wanted to add an image or an audio file or a video, you could do that here. So there's a little, a picture of what looks like a photo and there's a movie icon. You could click on either one of those and upload your media. You can build tables or add links here. Uh, I can set some options for each individual question. So if the students need a calculator, you could give them that. Um, if you wanted certain answers to be weighted differently, uh, or if you wanted to shuffle the answer choices, you would click either any of those. Could you show a, a weighting, please? So that opens up a points value next to each question. So say they answer this one, they might get one point. If they answer this one, they might get five points. 
Uh, I've never used this um, and I'm, I don't know enough about the strategy behind using it to, to do it, but, but that is how you would set that. Okay, uh, this button here that says align to outcomes is for competency-based and um, mastery type learnings, which I don't do uh, and I'm not familiar with that. Um, if I wanted to, I've just built this question from scratch and if I wanted to add it to a bank, I would click on item banking <clears throat> and then click add to bank. And I can create a new item bank and give it a name and, and add it, or I can put it in an existing item bank. And if I click on the drop down arrow here where it says select the destination bank, I can see the three types of item banks that I have in this <coughs> available to me. Um, so I could put it there if I wanted to. Um, you can select the overall points value for this question. And then when it's all done, click done to save the question. Uh, and it did not make me add a title. I left that blank and it did not make me add it. If I wanted to create a variation of this question, I didn't want to retype the whole thing. There is a, a plus sign over here on the right hand side. Um, so the, the pencil is to go back and edit the question. If I wanted to change something, the plus sign just duplicates that question. And then I could make a minor adjustment if I just wanted to ask it in a different way. I don't wanna keep this question. So I'm gonna click on this trash can on the right hand side out, out here next to the top of the question, which will just delete that. Yes, I'm sure I wanna remove it. All right, so I'm gonna talk about adding questions from an item bank next. Any questions about building a question manually so far? Looks good. So to add from an item bank, I'll click on the plus sign again to add a question. And this time I'm gonna click on the piggy bank that'll take me to my item banks. So I have created item banks uh, this summer because we have re reshuffled or shuffled or <laughs> redone our curriculum. So the content that I'm teaching this summer comes from three different previous semesters. And so it was easiest to me to just create banks and, and pull them into one place. And so I have a bank of questions for each of the quizzes, and then I have a bank for the whole semester. I could create a new bank here if I wanted to by clicking this blue rectangle that says add bank. Um, if I wanna add a question from this big pool of questions for semester three, I would click on semester three and I can add questions one by one if I wanted to. So my first question is about certification. Um, then I might also ask about recertification. So if I just click on that plus sign, you can see it populated it here as question number two. Say I wanted to add all of the questions or a, uh, I, wanted the, I wanted Canvas to randomly select questions from this bank, I would click on this gray rectangle that says add all or random. And then what you can see happened here is now it says questions three through 21 are all pulled from the bank titled semester three. Now, if I don't want all of the questions from the bank, I cl I've closed the bank by, by clicking the X on the top of the, the bank menu. And I'm gonna click on this pencil next to items three through 21 to edit this bank. <clears throat> So if I don't want to use all the questions, I would select randomly select questions. And then I would tell Canvas how many questions I want. So let's say I want five. Sorry. Five points per question. I want to keep it at one point per question. And then what you see is you're 
individual questions because they're going to be different for each student because it's randomly pulling questions. But it tells me that questions three through seven are going to be randomly pulled from semester three. I can preview the student experience. So I'm back up here at the top in this gray box that next to the word build over on the right hand side, there's the eye that says preview. And so you can see what the student would see when they go in to take the quiz. Click exit preview to get out of there. Any questions about um, banks, item banks? Somebody probably had a question about um, uploading questions from another file. Uh, we've gotten questions in previous sessions about uh, questions from the publisher. Um, and remind me to, to show you that whenever I get out of this quiz. Melissa helped me figure that yeah. out. Yeah, Sarah, while we're in this quiz and while we're talking about banks, uh, so one of my favorite things is to like do a reading quiz every class and I might drop the two lowest grades. Where's the function for dropping uh, low grades? Okay, so I'm going to click return and you actually get out of quizzes to do that. So that would be- okay assignments. Ooh, good question, Catherine. So Catherine points out that now I have a seven point question quiz, but I set it up to be five points. Let's see, I'm going to click return and then go back. Melissa, do you have a quick answer to that? I don't know without playing around with it. For, the, for dropping? No, uh, Catherine asked the question. I created it as a five point quiz when I first set it up, but mm -hmm. I have seven questions worth one point a piece. What um, does Canvas do with that? Well, I know, what the, I know what it does on classic quizzes. Classic quizzes, the total points is just the total of each question's points. This whole new piece of having a points category on new quizzes and then being able to have a non-matching amount is a little bit weird. Um, if you save this and go back to your settings, what happens? Um, so. Like save the whole build area entirely. Oh. still shows up as a five. But when oh, I yeah. into here on this left-hand navigation menu, now it shows seven. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'll have to do some reading um, in the documentation on why that is. Um, it doesn't make any sense. I would guess that um, the five that's in the settings outside of the build is what's building your grade book. And this is the number of points that's associated with the quiz you're building. So because it's an external tool and you're wanting it to work with the gradebook and Canvas, until they work this out, they should be syncing up, but they don't. So it sounds like it's a manual thing and you need to make sure that your points setting is correct so that your gradebook calculates properly. Um, this is a feature that's not fully rolled out. They're still working on it. So that's just one of those little, you know, quirks we're, we'll be working with temporarily. Um, what I like to do in these situations is go into student view and take the quiz uh, and then see what the results look like in the grade center. Uh, so I will show up as test student in the, in the grade center. Good question. Sorry, we don't have a very direct answer to that. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna go back to Susan's question about how to drop a quiz grade. Uh, so I'm gonna do that under assignments. Uh, so this is something that Melissa taught me last week. 
Uh, and so under assignments, I have created assignment groups, not to be confused with groups of students or people. And I have each group worth a certain amount um, according to my syllabus. And so here's that ProTop quizzes group where I put pretend quiz. Um, in the gray bar for the whole group, I'm clicking on the three vertical dots on the far right hand side and opening that menu and I'm gonna click on edit. And this is where I tell Canvas what to do with the scores. Uh, so number of scores to ignore. If I wanna drop one, then I would tell it to ignore one. If there's a certain assignment that I never want to be dropped, I could uh, add that in here. Uh, so that is how you do that. Can you set that up after the semester begins? Like supposing I know there's 15 quizzes and I drop one, but later in the semester, I feel I should drop two. Can I go back? Apparently so because um, my, I'm right in the smack middle of my semester right now and, and students have taken quizzes and it still lets me edit this. So I'm gonna say yes. Thank you. And Gail in the chat said yes. And there are settings in the grade book for late policies that after the fact will not retro go into effect. So just that that's a really good question for this, but there are some things that that does not work. And I did put a full detailed answer to the different points versus quiz points in the chat. Um, it's a little bit of a mind bender math wise. Um, that is from the documentation on what that means. So your total points, it's going to do calculations to take those seven points on your questions based on how they answer, mathematically do that, and then it's going to be worth five points, five points. as a whole. Okay. Thank you, Melissa. All right, um, so there's one more settings menu uh, that we haven't talked about yet. So I'm gonna go back into my pretend quiz. And I'm gonna click on build. Uh, so everything we've done, I'm in the, I'm looking at this top white bar at the top here. Everything we've done so far is in build. When you click on settings, there are even more settings that you could choose from. Um, you can shuffle the questions for the whole quiz, shuffle the answers for the whole quiz, uh, show only one question at a time. Require an access code is the same as requiring a password. Uh, so if you want to set a password for the quiz, setting your time limits is here. Uh, filtering IP addresses would be like maybe students who are only in one location could access the quiz. The calculator, um, multiple attempts or not. Uh, I like to do unlimited attempts and keep the highest score for uh, like what Susan was talking about with reading quizzes or checking for understanding. Um, I like that option there. And uh, restricting what students see. So restricting whether they see their score or what questions they got correct or not would all be done there. I'm gonna skip reports for just a minute and talk about moderate. Uh, so in new quizzes, you're able to moderate the quiz and this is where you set student accommodations. Um, there's, there's nothing in here for any of my students. Um, if you wanted to set accommodations, you would click the gray uh, rectangle here that says moderate and, and change how many attempts they get, how much uh, time they get, you would set that there. Uh, once students have taken the quiz, you could see their activity here. So how many attempts they had, what their score was, how long it took them. Uh, edit accommodations if you've set them up here. It's worth pointing out that in classic quizzes, to set student accommodations, you have to first publish the quiz. And then when you publish the quiz, 
the moderate button is actually over here on the top right side. It's not, it's not across the top there. All right. Sarah, a quick question on moderation. So I've got my uh, 20 reading quizzes and uh, somebody's got an accommodation of time and a half or something. Do I have to set that, uh, have to set that accommodation every single quiz or is there a option for, you know, blanket moderating? That's a good question. Um, I, I feel like back in the day when we first started piloting Canvas, I set accommodations for a quiz in my class. And then for every subsequent quiz I created, those accommodations would be there. Mm. Um, I haven't seen that this semester and I could be doing something wrong, but this is where I'm thankful for Melissa. Uh, maybe <coughs> a better answer to that question. Melissa, what's your wisdom here? I apologize, I'm multitasking. What, what, what was the refresh? So I've got 20 quizzes and I've got a student with, let's say an accommodation of uh, an extra 10 minutes or something. Do I have to create that accommodation 20 times in each quiz or can I, will it roll through? I do believe you have to create it every time. I'll do some digging and see if I can find another answer, but I have not seen a global place where you would set that up. Um, which is what we would be looking for to be able to answer that, you know, little dilemma. Okay, thanks. Unfortunately, you can do it in new quizzes, but not in classic. Okay. Yeah. You, you, Melissa's right. You're going to have to do it in each individual One quiz and classic quizzes. Yeah. Okay. Good so you get that, that pros and cons list just keeps growing. <laughs> Thank you guys for, for weighing in on that. That's a good question. Um, all right, so reports is where you go to look at how the class performed on a quiz. And nobody has taken this quiz because we just created it. So I'm gonna go look at a quiz that students have taken in my class. And um, I have a little, uh, here we go, open this huge list of assignments. Um, the self-assessment, this is a very, very low stakes checking for understanding quiz um, that students could take as many times as they want. And so I'm gonna open it up and remember I said classic quizzes, the navigation looks a little different. Uh, so this is a classic quiz. I created this um, in a previous semester and copied it over into this class, um, which while I'm mentioning it is super easy to do. Uh, so to copy, a quiz, um, these three vertical dots right here over to the side. If you click on that, I can copy to uh, somewhere else. I can move it to a different place in my course, um, but copy to, if I click on that, I can type in the class I want it to go to. So say I want it to send it to next semester. I could type in that course number and send it uh, somewhere else. Uh, so I have copied this out of a different semester. And um, remember I said the navigation is different. So instead of clicking build at the bottom to make edits, I click on edit up here at the top, this gray box. Um, if I wanted to moderate this quiz, I would, the moderate is here on the, the right side, not over and in the, the left side. Um, in new quizzes, I would click on reports to look at how the class did. Uh, for this, I'm gonna look at uh, quiz statistics. And so I get um, an overall view of how the class did. And you can see this was a class blah, 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 practice quiz. And so everybody did great on it. <laughs> and they could take it multiple times um, and everybody scored either a 90% or a hundred. Um, that wasn't a very good one to pick. Let's pick a different one. We'll go to this one. This one looks a little more interesting. Uh, so this is a new quiz. So I'm 
clicking on the bottom right, I'm clicking on build. And on the top, I'm gonna click on reports. Um, outcomes analysis is again related to mastery type learning outcomes. Um, I'm not doing that in my class. So I am going to click on, thanks Anna. <laughs> Um, I'm going to click on quiz and item analysis. And so this looks a little more interesting. There's a wider distribution of student grades. You can see that the low score was 53, the high was 100 with a mean of 87. And then I can see each individual question on the quiz. The difficulty index is uh, a percentage. So 78% of the class got this correct. Uh, this discrimination index is another valuable statistic that tells me how discriminatory the question oh. is. If I see a question that looks odd, like only 40% of the class got this correct, although it was highly discriminatory, I might look at this a little more closely and see, ooh, did, did I write this poorly or, or did I not prepare students well for this question um, and figure out if I need to make some adjustments. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to make those adjustments, but before I move off of reports, are there any questions about that? Should also show you this. On the right hand side, there's this carrot for a, that you can click on for each item and see a little more information about how many students selected each item. All right, so let's say I needed to make an adjustment on a question. I would have to, okay, there's a different way to do it for qu classic quizzes than there is for new quizzes. Okay, remember this is a new quiz. And so you do that for the grade center. And so I've successfully de-identified um, this. And so I would start in the grade center. I found my quiz one in the grade center and I would click into any students. Uh, score and then use this arrow to the right to open speed grader. So here's my speed grader. I would click on that. Within speed grader, looking at quiz results, I can see if I, if I had my whole grade book here, I could scroll down and see every question on the quiz and how the student answered it um, and how they performed. So if I wanted to make an adjustment, I would go to the particular item that I wanted to adjust and I would click regrade. And then what it would show me is, I'm gonna make this bigger so you guys can see it. What it would show me is what options I have to regrade the question. So it, it shows me that I can rekey the question and accept one, answer. Uh, I can change the points value for the whole item. So say I want to just make it worth zero points. Um, or I can change the points value on individual answers, which is not possible because I didn't set up my quiz that way. So what I don't have the option to do is accept multiple answers. So say I wanted to accept A and B. Uh, or if I wanted to, uh, for the students who got the question correct, I want them to keep their point, but I want to add a point to the students who didn't get the question correct. There's not an option to do that in new quizzes. There is an old. Eric, can I ask a quick question here? Yes. On the, the point value. So let's say I'm looking at this item and I've decided it's just a mess and I wanna throw this item out. Um, effectively, do I do that just by changing the point val value to zero? That's what I would do. Okay. One moment. All right. So let me show you um, classic quizzes. So I'm going to go back to um, clicking return to get out of here. And so to make adjustments in classic quizzes, you don't need to do it from the grade center, you do it at the actual quiz itself. So remember I said this week eight self-assessment is a classic quiz. 
So I'm clicking on it to open it. And I'm gonna click edit. And classic quizzes looks a little different. So your first settings uh, show up and then you actually uh, don't click build to move on to the questions. You click questions to get to your questions. And um, let's say I want to make an adjustment to this first question here. Everything's looking normal. And I try to click on a different correct answer. And I get this little warning box um, that says, students have already taken the quiz uh, and the canvas will regrade everything if I change anything. So, but there are more options available. Uh, so I can award points for both correct and previous answers. That way nobody loses any points. Um, I can rekey the question. I can update it without regrading. There are more options available. And then if I were to select one of those and then click update, um, it would regrade the student scores and then send me a note uh, whenever it's been done, send an email. So uh, just my personal experience about reports and making adjustments to quizzes and whether to use classic quizzes or new quizzes. Um, I like to use classic quizzes if I'm not confident in how the items will perform. If it's a real graded quiz, um, and I've never used the item before, or maybe I adjusted the learning activity a little bit. Um, I would personally choose to build the quiz under classic quizzes because I have more options available to make adjustments if I need to. I did use new quizzes this semester um, and I use questions that I've used a lot of times, um, but there is actually a quiz that I gave last month where um, you know, I mentioned we've shuffled the, the curriculum. And so I used to teach Medicare and Medicaid regulations in the same semester, but now they're in separate semesters. And so I, I gave students a quiz question related to what uh, lawmaker they should contact to advocate for change related to a Medicaid regulation. Well, they've talked about government affairs and advocacy, but they've only talked about it in the context of Medicare. Uh, and some other state related things. We haven't even touched Medicaid yet. And so I went, oh shoot, they did badly on that question. And so I needed to make an adjustment and I actually had to go into the grade center and individually add a point to every student who got that question wrong uh, for 53 students. So that was a bummer. All right, so I am at the end of everything I know about quizzes. Um, and so uh, what questions do you guys have? Uh, oh, one thing I didn't show you is, does anybody want to see um, <clears throat> importing questions from somewhere else? Like um, someone in a previous session asked about how to import questions from the textbook publisher. Would that be helpful? Sarah, I have a question. Yes. You said that it was easy to take um, a classic quiz and pull it in to make it and make it a new quiz. Can you just show us how you would do that? So this or is one of the things each that, question. Yeah, this is one of the things that Melissa has taught um, me over the last week. Uh, so if the airplane or the rocket next to the quiz is green, it's a it's a new quiz. If it's white, it's a classic quiz. And mm -hmm. so these three vertical dots over here on the right hand side, correct me if I'm going to the wrong place here. Okay. Uh, I click migrate. Oh, okay. And migrate would change it to a new quiz. Great. One click. Good. Thank you. Um, to import questions 
Um, I feel like I'm being quizzed doing this because Melissa just explained this to me during a session last week. So over here in this left-hand navigation menu on our red words over here, click on settings. This is your overall course setting. You're doing well, you get an A. Doing well, okay. And so then I'm over here on the right-hand side with this list of links and I'm gonna click on import course content. And so from here, I can click on this drop down, and I can import things from different places. Um, publishers questions would be a QTI zip file. And so I would select that and then you would upload it from your device. And if you want to go into a bank, you could select the bank you want them to go to. Once you've built the quiz, is it automatically available to students or do you have to publish or launch it within your course modules? If so how would you deploy the quiz? Great question. Once you build the quiz, it is not automatically available. You do have to publish it. So let's go look at the pretend quiz uh, that I created. I'm gonna click on it. Um, hold on, let me go back. Anything with a green check mark is published and students can see it. Anything that has the international no symbol is not published and students cannot see it. Um, I can quickly publish it by just clicking this and it'll turn it green. I'm not going to, cause I don't wanna tell my students that they have a quiz to take. Um, you can also do it um, as you are building or editing the quiz. So down here, there's a save and there's a save and publish. And so saving and publish does just that at the same time. Good question. Um, to deploy the quiz, um, you would need to put it in a place where students can find it. Um, so <clears throat> students can find things in assignments. And back in the, in the old days, I used to just leave quiz and assignments and tell students to go into assignments and find the quiz. Um, but I've gotten nicer about that, and um, I actually embed it in a module somewhere. So um, let's see, I believe in week, yeah, so in week four, I gave them their first quiz. Now, it wasn't over just week four. It was over the first four weeks of the class. It was over four modules, not just this one particular module, but I put it in this module because students are already clicking things and submitting things here anyway, and they don't have to go somewhere else to find it. So Melissa, I think what you're saying is, uh, so the I here that has the line through it, tells me that students can't see quizzes in my class. So they wouldn't be able to click here and go find their quiz, uh, but they can see assignments. It doesn't have the hidden um, symbol there. So I would have to put it into uh, assignments <clears throat> or put it in a module. Students like it when it's in a module because they don't have to go somewhere else or, or lower risk that they'll forget to go somewhere else to find the quiz. And it also does pop up on the calendar for having a due date. So even if you've taken away all the other ways you think that they can get to it, it will also be available in the calendar. So, you know, just something to keep in mind if you really are not ready, but you've published it they will be able to get in there. Any other questions? Can you, do that? Uh, you know how can you do grouping questions in a quiz? Grouping questions? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I'm not sure I know what you mean, like um, a question bank? No, when you have um, a, a set of questions that are kind of referring to the same um, topic. Oh. I don't, I don't know. I'm, I don't know if I missed it or I know I, I have heard yeah. it at some point, but I I don't remember how to do it. That's what I was asking. I haven't done that. We have one faculty member at the PT school who likes to do that. So likes to have like a patient case scenario and then have multiple questions related to it. Um, right. Has done that in exam soft. Mm -hmm. In classic quizzes, you have the option for a text where you just type something on the screen. I'm not sure about new quizzes, but in classic, it's there. So I could say something like use um, use this case study when answering questions five, six, and seven. Exactly. Okay. See so the difference between the the classic and the new, Melissa, with that. Um, no? Yes, there's a lot of differences. I don't know about that specific one yet. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'll, put, I'll find my trusty page on comparing and contrasting. One second. Yeah. It's okay. I can look at it too. I just, I just was wondering if it's something that it was easy to do or like people were using or not. I know in in my school we tend to do that, and we do an exam off. So that I don't know if it was the same. I never done quizzes not, on Canvas or Blackboard, so. It's not exactly the same, but I know that it does it in new quizzes. I'm just not sure the exact terminology of what it calls it. So when you made that question, what, what was it called? Was it called text? I, I was looking at the at the Canvas guides instead of your screen. Sarah, was, was this um, question that you added? Yeah, so I'm in classic quizzes. Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, go to edit the, the first question you just added. Yeah, so it gives me the choices down here. New question look like what I yes. and the, the look, stop okay. and the drop down option. See where it says multiple choice. Yes, I yes. Drop that down. All your choices are here, and it is text no question. Well, that's pretty cool. Oh, that just creates a line of text. Yeah. Exactly. And that's where you can put your case, your video, your instructions on, you know, questions five, six, and seven or over, you know, whatever explanation you want to provide there to make sort of a, an area. It's a little different than exam soft. And then I'm looking for what new quizzes looks like. So classic quizzes also has this new question, <laughs> which makes it kind of look like you could put something here. That's to pull from a question bank. Oh, okay. So like if I want to have 20 questions over a topic and a class, you know, I'm going to say pull five out of those 20. That's where you use the question group feature. I see. And then let me go back to this new quiz that I created. They call it stimulus content. Um, so it would be here then. Uh huh. So, yes. So you would add in. You might tell the student the answer. Questions below based on this case scenario, you have a scenario here and then add this to the bank. I don't see how to add questions to it though. You don't add questions you to don't. it. It's just going to put it on the page and then the ones after that would. Come. Oh, got you. So this is like the, the text only. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. All right. Got a help link on that. So you can attach a question with the add to bank link. It will prompt you through another layer of question type additions at that point.
So that help link goes into great detail with some good screenshots. Thank you, Melissa. Not seeing any other questions in the chat. Susan, you usually have a nice way of, of wrapping everything up and tying everything together. Well, I think we've all learned a lot about using quizzes. Um, and I want to thank you very much for uh, walking us through all of this. I have a question real quick. If I want to do a formative quiz, um, do I have it as ungraded or do I make, I mean, how do I make that happen? So there are a couple of different ways. I hope you're seeing my screen again. Um, I'm going to go out of here. Um, if yeah, mm -hmm. in classic quizzes, Make sure this is still true. In classic quizzes, uh, there's an option to make it a graded quiz, or you can click on this drop down next to quiz type and make it a practice quiz. Uh, then it doesn't count towards their grade. And um, I quit using this because it doesn't show up in the grade center. There is a way to go back in and look at student performance on it. Um, but it's not as quick and as, as uh, convenient as it being in the grade center. Uh, so you could make it a graded quiz um, and then just make it be complete, incomplete, or very low. Ah, that's probably what I need. Complete. Yeah. Show me that. Okay. Um, so when I, if I'm doing a, a practice quiz, I don't set a time limit. I'll still shuffle the answers because I think there's good uh, value in that. I'll allow students multiple attempts and uh, usually make it unlimited. So they can take it as many times as they want to keep the high score. Um, I want students to see how they did and I want them to see the correct answers. Um, and so I leave those checked. And then Um, in the grade center is where I would show how it displays. So I would publish it and then from the grade center is where I would show whether it shows up as a percentage or points or complete and complete. Okay, can you show me the complete and complete thing again? Let me see if I captured it in uh, my screenshots here. So this is, this is your grade center. You would find the quiz, okay? And it's not gonna do it because this is a screenshot, but if you right. go over here, um, oh. there should be, I believe there are three dots that you click okay. on. And when you click on that, you can select how you want to either sort the grades or how you want the grades to appear. In new quizzes, but I don't know if they remember. I can set that from, from mm -hmm. So I'm going back into my quizzes. I don't know. I guess you can check with Vic, but I don't remember. They only go certain days a week. I don't remember. I'm that. checking. I'm going back into the week eight self assessment. No, sorry, I'm not. I'm going back into pretend quiz. This is the new quiz that I just created right when we first started talking. Okay. That thinking. So from here, I can choose how I want the grade displayed. At the very as I'm ah, okay, got it. Mm -hmm. Instead of doing it on the back end, got why it. would you have a cardio this week and not tell us to, to cover it? Or if it was going to be the day they moves, that's like, look, okay, he did. Thank goodness. I don't want to push him too early, so he got it. 
Let me zoom out. Hold on. Uh, you know, another way to make a, uh, a quiz low, low stakes is let's say you have some practice quizzes, uh, like I usually create some just before tests. Um, and, but I want to see who's taken them and I want to take them to take a little bit seriously, but I just make the whole group worth one point or something. So, you know, it is, you know, virtually no impact on their grade, but it, it shows up and it gives you all that apparatus of looking at their work. So I have this, this is actually a huge category here uh, for online activities and in-class activities that, that I wanna hold students accountable for and I want them to actually complete, but they're just not worth very much. And so when I go into, uh, I went to assignments over here on the left side where I can see assignment groups. This whole category is only worth 5% of their total grade and there's a ton of activities in it. Uh, and so each one thing is worth very little at the end of the day towards their course grade, but it all shows up in the grade center and I can see if they're completing things and how well they're doing and if they're turning it in on time and, and all that. Yeah, I prefer that to the, um, the practice quiz option too, Sarah, because the conversation with the student is not doing well. Uh, goes better because you can say, oh, look, you've never done these 15 things I gave you to help yourself. So let's, why don't you do those and then let's have another conversation. Where if it's practice quiz, you don't know what they've done. Actually, that's a very good point. Yeah. I was thinking maybe a formative could be a paper in class, a paper quiz in class. Mm hmm. Yeah. Like what's the big picture kind of thing? Sure, yeah, and you know, what makes it formative assessment is that it's very low stakes. Right, okay, good. Uh, Catherine asked a good question. How did the quiz show up under the assignments tabs of Canvas do that automatically? Um, so when I created, I'm gonna go back into quizzes. And when I created this uh, pretend quiz, I chose what assignment group it went into. So I put it in ProTop quizzes. And so then when I go back into assignments, and go down to ProTop quizzes, it shows up there. From here, I can also move things. So say I don't want it under, under quizzes anymore. I want it to go into a different group. Say I want it in this really, uh, in this other category here, I could move it just by dragging it. Thank you for all of your questions. As you can see, I don't use quizzes always that there is to use them. Uh, and so I have learned things through every session as well. Thanks to Melissa and Kathy and uh, Terry uh, who has participated in some of these as well. So I appreciate their expertise. We appreciate it. Thank Sarah. you very much for doing this whole series of items on quizzes. They've been terrific. My pleasure. Have a good afternoon, everybody. Bye-bye.